it's always been a heated debate of whether kids should be included in in the wedding day. I mean, they're super cute and all, but do they belong at your wedding? It's a pretty awesome topic. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. Yeah, it's definitely a heated. It, it, it definitely creates uh, it creates some drama. It creates drama, and it's funny because I think your perspective changes once you have kids, and when you don't have kids. Right. So, like before Chloe, <laughs> no kids. Definitely no kids. And now there's Chloe, and now I'm it's like, like 50, kids 50. should be everywhere. Oh. All the time. Well, this is uncomfortable. Even at the bar. Well, our kid does go to a bar with right. us. Right. But. Yeah. Right, obviously. I don't know if that's necessarily like that's not appropriate. appropriate. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> interesting. I know it is interesting. Haven't you wondered why people are giving us those weird looks? I just thought they just thought we were an attractive family. Probably. Yeah. I mean, our kid's pretty cute. She's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So and then she just jibber jabber all the time and <laughs> starting to, starting to run around and. So I mean, yeah. But no, I mean, do you really want kids at your wedding? That's a question. Yeah, it's and maybe like, it's not fair to include Chloe in this. Maybe it's it's not it, fair it, because let's, Chloe's let's, like her own she's, special thing. Exactly. Right? Like, like she's obviously you would ex- want Chloe there. Exactly. Of course. I mean, have you seen how cute she is? <laughs> it's, it's out of control. <laughs> at least we're not. At least we're not biased towards our own child. No, no. I don't think most people are mm-mm, though. Mm-mm, no. No. <laughs> no. It's, uh, it's something you gotta be careful with. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So besides Chloe, <laughs> should kids be invited to weddings? I mean, so when we got married, we were pretty, we were kind of like on the fence. I feel like we didn't necessarily feel one way or the other. We didn't, we didn't have a lot of friends with kids and we didn't have a lot of kids in our family. So we didn't like have a lot of little kids. We had a few like, you know, like eight, 10, 12 year olds that came. But other than that, we really didn't have kids. So it wasn't much of a debate for us. We really didn't have kids. I feel like it changes when your ki- friends start having kids and like you're getting married, then it's more of like a debate or like you have older siblings. We're right. both the oldest. So we didn't have any older siblings with kids. That's true. That and, changes it. And and I also would be afraid that if we said no kids that I wouldn't have been invited. Well, there's that. Or Dan. Yeah. 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 It's just been yeah me. And then it should have been you hanging out. I know. Yeah. That been, and Matt. Matt's, Matt's, Matt's a grown up like me. Yeah. <laughs> true. For all my, the people it, listening, these are my brothers. Yeah. <laughs> and my brother's, he was never a kid, even when he was also a kid. Also a grown up. Also yeah. a grown up. Yeah. So yeah, it just would have been you and Dan just yeah. weren't invited. Right. That would have been awkward. Yeah. All right. I well. did enjoy my chicken tenders though. <laughs> no? Always, always a kid at heart. Always, yeah, exactly. Always a kid at heart. And in your food selections, apparently. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah. The f- the main food groups, chicken right. fingers and, and pizza. Cake. And cake. We right. already know how you Yeah, we already cake. covered cake though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for our listeners who want to know whether they should bring kids or not. E- de- excluding Chloe. Excluding Chloe. Right. Be- right. Okay. So. <laughs> so when to invite kids. So, you know, when, so this is the first thing that we'll kind of tackle, but when is it appropriate to, you know, to include kids at your wedding? So I think there's a few scenarios. If you're an easygoing couple, then you're going to be probably be okay with including kids because you're not going to kind of have like, you know, these strict ideas of what your wedding's going to look like. So you might be more flexible. Um, You got to think about kids. They are wild cards, as we have found out. (laughs) (laughs) They don't do exactly what you would like. They do go rogue. They go rogue. They don't do exactly what you want. So, you know, as long as you are like easygoing and feel comfortable with that, then, um, you know, of course, it's great to include kids and then there's no drama really, right? Like you don't have to tell people not to bring their kids. Yeah. but uh, they are wild cards, so you gotta you gotta keep that in mind. Um, if you have a big family, like we were saying, um, maybe you ha- are like the youngest of a couple of siblings, and you have you know your older siblings already have kids, or younger siblings already have kids. Who knows? Uh, but maybe like your siblings have kids, and you have a bunch of nieces and nephews, or you have like a big family, and there's just like kids of all ages floating around, and that sounds that sounds super cool probably going to be harder to tell your big, big, huge family that none of these kids are invited. Um, especially when you think about the logistics of like, who's going to watch all these kids since right. family's all going to be at the wedding. <laughs> 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 or like maybe you have like a super close relationship with your nieces or nephews or friends, kids or whatever, whoever these kids are. Um, and they're maybe a part of the bridal party or something like that. Um, then obviously that's where you want to want to include kids in, in your wedding. Yeah, and, and actually, you, you do touch on something that's becoming more and more popular is um, childcare 
on wedding yeah. days. Um, you know, like we, so we work closely with Platinum Sitters and um, based out of Raleigh, but across North Carolina, um, they, you know, th- they're able to provide vetted sitters that can, you know, watch your children in a room. You have to work that out with the, with the venue though. I know that can kind of change insurance policies. There's a lot of like kind of yeah. rules there, but yeah. what are your thoughts on things like that? Yeah. I think that offering childcare is a super nice to have. Um, if budget allows, you have a lot of kids, maybe you want your kid, the kids to come to the ceremony, but you know, your party's going till 11 or 12 at night. Most kids aren't going to stay up that late. Um, but you want your parents, the parents to have a good time. So like, I think childcare can make it really like a good in between where you're not telling parents they can't bring their kids um, and not giving them a solution. You're gi- you're telling them they can't bring them and, and you're giving them a solution. Not yeah. to say it's a necessary thing, but it's certainly like a nice addition to that kind of guest experience if you decide to go the route of not including kids in your wedding. Um, yeah. And make it a little bit easier. Yeah. And it's, I mean, depending on where you host them, if it's on site at the venue, then that can be really nice for parents because then they can just like pop in and check on them and you know right. things like that which is nice so little things like that to think through but again like you mentioned you definitely have to think through if that's even possible at your venue so if it's something you're considering you want to keep that in mind in that first initial like venue search and kind of ask that question in your first venue meetings yeah i think that's i think that's important so you know is it okay to invite some kids and and none at all <laughs> that's a tricky that's excluding a, chloe of course obviously <laughs> Uh, that's super tricky. Um, it can lead to a lot of hurt feelings. Um, so generally no (laughs) would be my, would be my answer, but it's okay if you like set rules. So maybe you say like only kids under the age, you know, over the age of eight can come or only, you know, um, kids under the age of one because they're newborns or whatever, or, um, families, kids can come, but that's the, you know, that's the end or whatever. I would just say, if you allow some kids to come and not others, that you make sure that the people who have, who have kids that you're not inviting, uh, understand prior to the wedding, why their kids weren't invited. Cause the last thing you want is for them to like, get a babysitter, show up and then be like, are you kidding? Like all these kids are here yeah. and my kid wasn't invited. Like they're going to take that super personally. So make sure like if you do go that route that you set rules, you stick to the rules and you communicate the rules. And then what I'm going to go rogue here. Shocking. Shocking. Right? I'm going off script. Um, <laughs> Nobody expected that. This is brand new. This is uncharted. I'm territory. ready. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, I hope what no, I'm nervous. Yeah, you should be. Um, what, how would you handle as, as the person getting married or as a planner when someone brings kids, when there's, they say no kids. Oh, that's kind of the worst. Have you had that honestly. Happen? Yeah. It's kind of the worst. Um, so my best, my yeah, best, nobody wins. Nobody wins. Yeah. Um, my best advice is, to as as the bride or the groom who is there and sees sees this happening uh, I feel like I feel like the couple always sees <laughs> the person show up with the bride le- I mean with the kid before before the ceremony which just is like the worst possible timing of course <laughs> um, I wish I could like sneak them in or something uh, but no <laughs> um, uh, my advice is to just let it go because there's nothing you can really do at that point right um, don't let it ruin your day uh, things are, things are hopefully not, but most likely something will, will probably go wrong on wedding day. And so having a professional team, which obviously we vet and make sure happens at Bustled, shameless plug. Um, (laughs) but no, um, I think, you know, having a, a team around you will help make sure that things don't go wrong, but like something like that can't really control. Right. The best thing to do is to kind of just, just let it go and not dwell on it and, deal with it after the wedding don't stress about it on your on your day and like let it ruin your day um I mean one thing that like I try to keep in mind too is like if we have kids that are showing up for the ceremony like a lot of times as a planner like I'll know why my couples decided not to have kids right. so maybe they didn't want a screaming child during their ceremony right fair um so maybe if I like see like a parent 
arrive with a child, I'll just like kind of say like, hey, um, you know, they wanted to make sure nobody was like crying during the ceremony. So, you know, if your kid starts crying, do you mind just like stepping out or something like nice like that? You can you can kind of like deal with that situation depending on, you know, how how the parents feeling. Um, they already know they did something wrong. So they're probably going to be a little sensitive to it and yeah. maybe more like amenable to <laughs> like your request. But my biggest advice is just like don't let it ruin don't let it ruin like the moment before you walk down the, the aisle or, right. you know, when you get to the reception, just don't let it ruin your night because that stinks. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're going to be married and you're going to have a great party. So just remember that. Yeah. Easier said than done. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> so do you need to decide right away if you're going to invite kids? I and mean, we've talked a little bit, we've, a lot, not a little bit, a lot about budget and timeline and, and checklists and all these things. So like, where does this fall in the planning process? Uh, you don't have to decide right away, uh, but I would encourage you to have the discussion pretty early on along the lines of your guest list. So when you start building the guest list, typically you're going to put like everybody, like we've talked about, everybody on there that you could possibly think of, and that's going to include kids. Um, and that usually starts starts the um, conversation right there, especially if one of you feels passionately about it. Right. Um, so you want to kind of start having that conversation and thinking about like, you know, do we, I mean, especially if you have a lot of kids on your guest list, I mean, what if you have 20, 25 kids that can make a big difference on your guest count. Oh, yeah. uh, so that could, you know, decide whether or not you can have your venue. So you uh, definitely make a big impact on your budget. Um, so you definitely want to have that conversation in the beginning. Like I mentioned too, you want to know, like, do I need a special room for kids? Right. Make sure you ask that question at the venue during the site visit. So, you know, like, okay, if we decide not to have kids, we could have a babysitter or we can't have a babysitter. We need to get a conference room at the hotel or whatever. Right. So you kind of have that in the initial planning. Uh, you definitely need to know before you send your invitations because that's where you'll, you'll indicate if kids are invited or not. Right. Makes sense. So kind of moving on from there, like when not to invite kids. So like, when is that appropriate? So I guess I want to clarify in both. It's always appropriate if that's what you guys want, period. But <laughs> uh, less appropriate to invite kids to a black tie wedding. A lot more formal. Um kids aren't going to be the best, you know, they're wild cards. Like we talked about rogue. Yeah. Uh, I would say they're probably not the best attendees for a black tie event. Um, also, if you don't have kids in your family or your bridal party, then that's like an easy way to be like, sorry, no kids invited. Um, you're not going to have to deal with as many hurt feelings. Um, if you don't have a, like a lot of friends with kids, it just makes it a lot easier. Um, again, you have to define like what that kid age is right. um, before you, you know, make this, this rule, but this kind of applies to all parts of the guest list. Once you make a rule, stick to it. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's great. So what age is considered a kid? So it depends. Um, you know, typically under 18 is kind of like standard kid. Um, mm -hmm. I would say most kids meals for vendors, you know, could be anywhere from eight, eight and under 13 and under. So, you know, that kind of age. Um, so, it goes back to picking an age and sticking to it. So maybe you're like super co close to your cousin who's 14. Maybe she's going to be a little junior bridesmaid or something like that. So you say anyone under the age of 13 is a kid. Everyone over the age of 13, you know, is not a kid. So now that means that if you have a cousin who's 15, that person's also invited. Right. Um, but, you know, maybe your cousin who's eight isn't. So that kind of helps to like set those those rules. Mm -hmm. um, you also want to think if you have like a family that has multiple children, you know, if you're going to invite some and not the other, how does that work out? So just think about like the dynamics before you kind of set that, that standard age for, for you guys, what kids means. And how do you communicate that? Is that going on the invitation on the save the date, a text, <laughs> smoke signal? Like what is that? Kind of all of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, specifically the smoke signal. No, yeah. um, invitation is going to be the most formal place to indicate that. So on your wedding invitations on the outside envelope, if you're only doing one envelope or if you're doing two envelopes, then it would be on the inside envelope. Um, it's going to say specifically who was invited. So it would say Mr. and Mrs. Ryan Roberts. If Chloe was not invited, it would say Mr. and Mrs. Ryan Roberts. And then Chloe Roberts, if 
you know, our whole entire family was invited. That's the proper way to do it. And you never want to say and family because that can open you up to literally inviting your entire family. I mean, we could think that means like we get to bring pickles or my mom. (laughs) I mean, people use their sense, but you don't want to like you want to give people kind of some guidelines so they only bring the people that you want. So so going back to the definition of a, of a kid, though. So, I mean, are you listing that on there? We consider a kid 13 and under or like and, and then in, the, in that same vein, how what if someone has a 16 year old and a 10 year old? And you're defining kid as 13. So, like I said, their names will be on there. So if you had two kids, you would only have the one name on there, not mm. the second name. Um, another way to do it uh, that, you know, is uh, Emily Post correct uh, is on your RSVP card. You can say mm. number of, you know, number of seats reserved for you and you would say three. Or you can say number of attendees, blank, which your, you know, guest would fill out of blank which you would fill out which is three um so that's a couple other ways that you can indicate it those are those are the proper ways to indicate it on your on your invitation um other ways to indicate it would be on your wedding website okay that's a great place to put the kind of this like other information um so you could say on there like this is an adults only reception um for you know we consider anyone over the age of 14 to be invited or something like that um that being said if it's family and you're, you know, not including kids, it's always good to communicate that either to the family directly, call them, email them, just explain like, look, this is a really formal event and we just didn't feel it was appropriate for children to be here. Here are some suggestions of other, you know, maybe some local babysitters or we're having a babysitter on site um, or maybe just giving them a call and being like, look, we love your kids. We wish they could come, but we're limited by our guest count or whatever, right. you know, your reason, even if your reason is just, we don't want kids, uh, maybe make them feel a little better (laughs) and give them like a, a PC answer to why you don't want kids. Um, but that would be, those are, those are my suggestions of how to, how to actually communicate it. Okay. So then what if you want to have a ring bearer or flower girl, but you don't want them to come to the reception? That's actually kind of normal. Um, so that's totally fine. Uh, obviously, you would need to call the parents and make sure that they're cool with that. Um, and then maybe in that instance, you would have a babysitter on site specifically for them because they were like a part of the bridal party. Um, or maybe you have somebody who comes and picks them up after the ceremony and takes them you know, home like to Uber. babysit. Probably not an Uber, but... Okay, so you prefer Lyft. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> like a babysitter or a grandparent or someone, or maybe like the parents, like I've had like mom maybe takes the kids home and then comes back for the reception or something like that. So you can usually work those details out. Um, I've also had people who've had the kids come to dinner. So they fed them because they were like a part of the bridal party. And then before the party started, they went home. So that's like another option too. Okay. Perfect. And then when we're looking at kind of the etiquette around or how to handle things with you know, inviting or not inviting kids. So we've kind of talked about the invitation. That's where you're going to list the names. But should you go a step further and call and kind of explain the logic here or just send them to the wedding website? Like what, is, what are your thoughts on that? I think it depends on how close you are to them and how like worried you are that they're going to just go rogue and bring the kids anyway sure and how worried you are about hurting their feelings so kind of those three considerations if you're worried about hurting their feelings and you're very close to them you should probably call them and explain if you're worried they're going to go rogue you should call them and explain <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of the recommendation that i have i would also make sure that like you're VIP is like moms and dads and sisters and brothers. And, you know, maybe if you're super close to aunts or whatever, if you have a big family that they kind of know and they know your reasoning and like what to say when people ask them right. um, that way, like if their friends or maybe like other family members you don't talk to on a regular occasion ask, they can kind of give the answer. Um, so you don't have to like call every single person who has a kid. Yeah, because that would that would take a while. Yeah, and it's kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, it's not it's not gonna be fun. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so, if children are invited, do I need to make special arrangements for them? So, like we kind of talked a little bit about this earlier, um, but like, are I guess outside of childcare, are there other things that you can do for them to keep them entertained? Yeah, 
So there's definitely other things you can do. Kids get bored, period. But especially at a wedding reception, which is not overall very kid friendly. I'm pretty sure it's very kid friendly. <laughs> it's kind of like going to an amusement park. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the opposite for kids, I think. I mean, yeah. it's well, fun for it's well fun then, for adults. <laughs> then I think then there should be a ball pit. I think that's <laughs> step one. Right? Um no, there's a lot of fun things you can do. You can bring games, you can set up a TV maybe in like a back room that's playing movies. Um you could have coloring books. I've had people who've done like cute little like wedding uh like like coloring pages that would be like in place of a menu card oh, at their cool. place setting. Um, so that's really fun. Um, so there's different things that you can do to like keep them occupied. People love having like uh, lawn games and like big, like giant checkers and things like that. So like if you have a lot of kids, then maybe you make sure to invest in that. So there's like outside things to do for the kids. Um, so those are different things that you, that you can think about. Oh, those are a lot of fun. This coloring book. That's brilliant. Would yeah. you just go to like Etsy or something? Yeah you can you can go to etsy or i mean i've had people create like custom ones with like them on it like there's so many fun things you can do yeah that's fun yeah i'm kind of want one now (laughs) all right i'll (laughs) print one for you when we get back to the office perfect (laughs) again i am a child (laughs) um (laughs) with your chicken fingers for lunch yeah obviously obviously and honey mustard um will they still Will they still, at least we amuse ourselves. We do, we do. Yeah. <laughs> um, will they still need a seat and a meal? Most likely the answer to that is yes. Um, so you will be paying for them. You won't have to pay for them at the bar, although sometimes you will have to pay for like a, still like a drink package for them to drink like sodas and water and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Um, which is obviously going to be much cheaper than the liquor. But um, yes, so most likely you need a seat for them unless they're under the age of, you know, two and they're going to sit on someone's lap. Right. Um, a question to know is, do you need a high chair? Uh, if you need a high chair, does your venue have a high chair? Mm. If your venue doesn't have a high chair, do you have to rent a high chair? So things to think about when it comes to that. Yeah. Um, and yes, you will have to feed them. So they will have to count into your food count if you decide to have them seated with you in the main room. If you have them maybe in another room, you would still have to obviously usually pay for their food. Uh, sometimes you can bring in like pizza or Chick-fil-A Jimmy John's. or Jimmy John's or something. <laughs> I'll say most likely not, especially if the venue is ca- is a caterer. Sure. You're probably going to have to go through them. Um, but it's something, again, you can ask in that initial phase if you think you're going to have kids. And are they are they getting the filet or the salmon and uh, are they getting the same meal? And is it the same cost? Depends. Uh, if they're getting the same cost, uh, if they're getting the same meal, then generally, yes, it's going to be the same cost mm. unless they have like a, they make a smaller portion for the kids or something. Right. Um, but most caterers can do a kid's meal, which is going to be, you know, what you wanted for dinner. Chicken right. fingers and... Right. Um, Shaped like dinosaurs. Sure. <laughs> Macaroni and cheese, whatever. Sure. Um, if you have like a buffet or stations, then they might do like a reduced cost because they're not going to eat as much food as an adult. Right. But then they would, you know, obviously get the same thing from the buffet or stations. So it just depends. It's something to talk to about with your venue. Interesting. So I'm going to put you on the spot. So right. <laughs> what, so generally on average ish approximately, um, what, what would a kid's meal typically cost uh, or, or alternatively, if you don't, aren't comfortable throwing numbers out, what percentage of like an adult's meal would it usually be? Is it half off? Is it 75% off? Like what, a, whatever you're comfortable answering here. Uh, I mean, I would see I'm just curious. No one else kids cares. meals. <laughs> Me. I mean, I would see kids meals running between 20 to $40, depending on, Got it. you know, okay. what, how much your adult meal costs. Sure. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, so uh, it looks like I've jumped the gun here a little bit, but babysitters, do they count as guests? <laughs> Imagine that. You. Interesting. <laughs> who who would have thought? thought that you would have um, thought this through? If your babysitter has a seat at a regular guest table then yes they are a guest if they're in another room um then they will probably be eating whatever the kids are eating Mm -hmm. or you i mean you need to think about feeding them they can't leave sure if you're chasing 20 kids around the room you should probably be so just like your other vendors you should feed them um but maybe they eat a vendor meal which is a cheaper cost or something like that if they're not at the main if they're sitting at the main table then they have to eat what everybody else is eating. i I don't want to talk about vendor meals because that's a trigger (laughs) Um, I know, I know how you guys get, Um, we like like to eat. Yeah. (laughs) You don't want a cold ham sandwich. No. All right. All right. All right. So, (laughs) so uh, any other kind of 
closing topics we should touch on here. I feel like we could, some of these things we could kind of extrapolate on for a while, but <laughs> is there anything else like that couples should think about um, when it comes to, do I invite children to the wedding? Do I not reception ceremony, all those sort of things like, yeah. So I think the biggest thing is make a decision and stick to it. No matter how much pushback you get from family, from friends, from people with kids, like you need to make that decision that you, you too feel comfortable with and you need to stick to it. Even if that means that some people may not come because they don't like your decision. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's unfortunate. Um, but you made the decision for a reason, so stick to it. And That's good life advice. Down. Yeah, that is good life advice. <laughs> <laughs> Making a mental note here. Exactly. <laughs> Write that one down. Yeah. Um, and then make sure you clarify. So whether you clarify via the invitation, your website, call, you know, but make sure if somebody RCPs and they say, oh, I want three meals and you didn't invite their kid, then you need to call them and you need to explain like, look, like I love your kid, but we're not having kids and it's not fair if you bring your kid when I haven't allowed anyone else. Right. So that's why we have the rule. You know, I hope you can still come. Um, should I mark you down for two seats and see what they say? Hopefully, you know, they still come. And if they can't come, then it is what it is. Um, and make sure that if you decide not to have kids that you give parents enough time to get childcare. Sure. I would give them as many resources as you can. So if budget doesn't allow for you to have an on-site babysitter, then maybe ask around locally, like find babysitters names, find great services like platinum sitters that can offer, um, you know, vetted, uh, babysitters, um, give all that information to the parents, put it in the welcome bags, send it out with a save the date, like let them know like, Hey, we're not going to be allowing kids. Here's some great sitters. Go ahead and get someone booked. Um, so, you know, give them all that kind of information so that they're not like struggling and can't come just because they don't know anyone with a babysitter in you know, your local town. Perfect. <laughs>